Hello and welcome to Actually Speak podcast, a special initiative by Jai Hind College to help students discover the world of actuarial science. I am Divya Prasad, your host for today. I am a qualified chartered accountant and also an aspiring actuary. And just like many of you, I am also curious to dive deeper into this field and learn about the exciting opportunities it holds. Today, we have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Sumit Ramani. Sir, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Divya. Excited about this conversation. Uh, sir, I would love to start by hearing your story. What is your background? Uh, what led you to actuarial science and what has kept you excited about it? Yeah, so, I'm a computer science engineer. I graduated as an engineer in 2006. Uh, uh, was placed in an IT firm as part of campus placement. So, joined the company. but. I had, I wanted to do something which was more focused on maths, not saying that software engineering doesn't require maths, but back then, uh, software engineering meant writing codes which were already there, there in the Google, right? Uh, and not involving, at least your day job did not involve a lot of math, right? Uh, so uh, I started reading out uh, to understand what all things can I do starting from here. Ended up reading an article in Outlook Money, which was on actual science, the profession. Read about it, everything about it made sense. And I said, maybe yeah, this is the, something that I want to pursue. Incidentally, around the same time, I had found a so-called mentor uh, who, who had also joined uh, the company that I was in. And he happened to know about actual science as, as, a, as a career option. And he said, uh, actually, banjo, life uh, which was good enough for me to explore further. Uh, and when I spent more time reading about it, I thought this is what I would want to invest my time on. And yeah, uh, then incidentally, around the same time, uh, a friend of mine, school friend of mine had joined one of the insurance company in their IT department. And he said they are hiring in the IT function. I said this could be a neat transition. I moved to an insurance company in their IT function and eventually make the transition to the actual function, mm-hmm. which happened after three years or three and a half years, I joined the uh, insurance company. And since then, yeah, it has been an exciting ride. What keeps me excited is uh, the, uh, the dynamic uh, environment that it brings it by design, right? So. Everything that we do uh, is fairly dynamic in terms of uh, uh, the macroeconomic uh, changes do impact what we're doing. The business environment also has an impact on what we're doing. And more importantly, what we do uh, impacts several lives, right? So it's a it's an interesting situation to be in where your job already is exciting, but you also get a satisfaction of doing something which has wider impact uh, not just in India, but across the globe. Thank you, sir. Uh, so now I have a few questions with me today that most of the students interested in actual profession may have. So I'll proceed to ask them one by one. So the first question is, uh, could you explain what a non-traditional actuary is and how is it different from a traditional actuary? Because you uh, have described yourself as an independent and non-traditional actuary. So could you differentiate the two for us? So if you are walking on a path that is already clear, uh, uh, then you're walking on someone else's, right? Uh, that's a philosophical take on it. Um, but essentially, if you're uh, in, in terms of actuarial science, if you're if what you're doing as part of a day job is already being done by someone else, has been done in, by someone else in the past, then it's a more traditional setting. Uh, For those who are deeper into the profession, uh, they would know that there are regulations, there are actual practice standards, there are guidance notes for some of the key things that we do as part of uh, our profession. So wherever there is a practice note, uh, guidance note or practice standard available, it's most likely going to be a traditional path. Everything apart from that is non-traditional which uh, essentially means applying the same set of actual skills in a setting where it's not very common to apply those skills. For example, uh, I've worked with a gaming company. If you look at insurance and gaming are not very different. Uh, Mm -hmm. In insurance, you are paying a premium uh, so that you are uh, guarded against an extreme event that's very less likely to happen. 
in uh, gaming you are paying a small amount as part of the ticket so so that you could win a jackpot which is also a very rare event right in both cases house always wins but the underlying math remains same okay sir uh, the next question is what made you choose a non traditional actuarial path instead of the typical insurance or pension route so i i would be honest here it's not something that i chose it it happened with me and then i started to build upon it so when i qualified as an actuary i thought i'll probably want to have more control on my time use go the traditional route of focusing on uh, pensions business or retirement uh, benefit consulting business and build a business out of it turned out that i made up some uh, key assumptions which turned out to be right uh, turned out to be wrong uh, and around the same time i started uh, uh, getting projects which are more focused on insurtech which is basically tech companies trying to solve an insurance problem given my background in computer science and also uh, understanding of insurance and actual science i realized that i'm in a very niche position to uh, focus on this area and when when i got deeper into it i realized that since i am uh, i have a unique set of skill which is was quite rare in 2017 not just in india but across the globe it made sense to just focus on it and build upon it so it was not bad choice it just happened and i continue to build up on it okay uh, the next question is uh, what kind of clients or uh, companies or industries do you work with most yeah so i largely work with insurtech which are essentially in insurance industry the wider wider ecosystem uh, think of them as uh, startups focusing on insurance as an industry trying to solve one of the insurance value chain problem Uh, some might be trying to innovate on the product some might be trying to uh, use better methods of underwriting so that the risk classification could happen better some might just be working on the claim side of things so that the claims process could be smooth the the, the leakages could be reduced uh, everyone is trying to do uh, make an attempt to either increase the top line that is sales or add efficiency so that the profits are increased So my main area of work is around insurtech, where I bring my insurance understanding, tech understanding, and actual skills to help my clients. As I said, I've also worked with uh, uh, a gaming company for extended period of time, and they saw a lot of value in what we did, and they continue to work with us. Uh, the other area we have also worked with investment banks, wherein they wanted to do a independent mortality study because they were doing something else. We, we helped them as well. Uh, pensions industry of course that's where we have contributed as well uh so essentially largely uh, financial services industry and gaming in some example in some cases but these Sorry. skills are ap- applicable pretty much in every industry it's just that we somehow have a, a predefined niche in insurance and hence it becomes easy but the skills that we have uh, are useful in every industry is just that there are other people who are more valued in different industry for example in banking people would look at cfa and frm uh, as opposed to have a hiring an actuary but not saying that we can't do those stuff so you just mentioned how your engineer background helped you in your uh, in your practice so what other uh, areas are there that a student should explore like data science or economics or business while studying actuarial science Yeah so while studying actuarial science it's a good idea to focus on actuarial science it's a very deep comprehensive <laughs> course uh, uh, and once you do when you are focused on it you're probably not left with a lot of time to explore widely but if you do get uh, i think wider reading always helps uh, what has helped me a lot is reading uh, about human psychology also history uh, also uh, uh, i mean uh, in some cases fiction has also helped me a lot because the way if you read fiction you realize that the level of detail when someone is trying to explain or uh, paint a picture is very detailed right and that also helps sometimes so i think wide, wider reading generally helps but when you're writing exams it's a good idea to focus on them and uh, the last question would be how do you stay ahead of the trend the uh, trends or uh, changes in your field Yeah, by working closely with people who are ahead of me uh, so for example in, in certain areas right so for example i contribute to india insurtech association where uh, pretty much every insurtech that exists in india is a part of 
so while i volunteer for them i also get to see what they are doing right um, so i don't have to wait till a situation where a client comes and then i realize okay this is this is also a possibility uh-huh. but i already am aware of uh, there are some in case of insurtech there are journals that get published every quarter so reading them also helps there are some of the podcasts that i bump into uh, are quite insightful so those also helps uh and of course on the job you learn a lot because when you talk to a client they eventually come up with an interesting problem so you learn from them as well sometimes attending some of the conferences are also very helpful uh thank you for everything that you shared so far so i'd like to change things up with a quick yeah. round of rapid fire questions uh they are meant to be fun and easy questions so the answers can be brief if you like shall we shall we get started yeah let's do it so the first question would be what was your least favorite subject as a student i wouldn't say there was any least favorite uh, but maybe the subject that did trouble me a bit was uh, ct9 business awareness uh, maybe just because uh, i was in a certain situation so i am amongst few people who failed ct9 then i reattempted it then i this happened with the indian institute and then i started writing exams from the uk institute and i had to write ct9 again so that's the exam that i've written thrice uh, which most people oh. probably do it only once oh uh, the next would be what is that one non natural hobby that helps you think better i think read, reading does help me a lot uh, 100% wider reading largely history psychology uh, does help me a lot it helps me understand the human behavior and understand why they behave in a certain fashion equally i'm a huge fan of behavioral biases uh, it helps me see through things which are not obvious mm-hmm. right? so yeah uh, next would be if you weren't an actuary what would you be uh, except engineer yeah so i mean very hard to answer now i can't think of anything else which would have, which would have been as exciting as this maybe a writer but uh, I'm not very sure though. Okay, what is your professional superpower that no one taught you in school? Yeah, I think it's just that doing what you have said, right? If you said that you will be on time, you are on time. If you said you will deliver this by today evening, it happens, right? So, if your words are as uh powerful or as important and relevant as a contract, right? If you said you do it by end of today, you just do it as if it was a contractual requirement for you to do it and that helps a lot because ultimately people want to work with reliable people and this is how you build trust over a period of time just valuing your words and giving them their due importance so you just said word and the next question is actually about word that what is that one buzzword that students should stop mentioning in their cv i think uh, uh, cvs are going to be passe uh, so cv is essentially saying that i know x y z i studied a b c but as we get to a point where we would have uh, more number of people in actual profession uh, i think what would have more weight is proof of work okay i studied a b c but what did i do to apply it is there something that i built is there something that i uh, is there a blog that i wrote about is there is there a is there a, a place where i apply this technique and utilize it somewhere else right so having proof of work would help uh, and proof of work uh, just can't be disputed so uh, which also does couple of other things right is something that were generally genuinely curious your ability to apply something that you learn and those are the things that set you apart uh, what do you wish you knew before becoming an independent consultant that it was not this hard <laughs> so uh, do, doing something like this uh, is essentially starting from scratch again so let's say if i uh, i started as soon as i qualified as an actuary if i had carried on i think life would have been slightly simpler but not as much fun uh, because you qualify you then it uh, the journey changes if you continue your job right but qualify and then starting again from scratch is altogether a uh, different level of task uh i do not regret it but i thought it would have been slightly easier and lastly a question that i think a lot of students may have if a student dm do on linkedin with a sincere question would you reply uh i tend to reply most people if uh, the first message itself has every detail most people say just say hi and expect me to say hi uh-huh. back which doesn't kind of work 
but if you have a specific question that is not same as what does an actually do uh, something which is mm-hmm. not available on google something where i could bring value specifically i'm more than mm-hmm. happy to reply and if you want a quicker quicker response i'm more active on twitter okay uh that ends the rapid fire questions um sir it's been an absolute pleasure speaking or rather listening to you today and uh thank you for uh, sharing such valuable insights and taking the time to walk us through your journey we truly appreciate it sir uh thanks a lot divya and happy to contribute to anything that leads to awareness about actual profession i think it has not gotten its due in terms of uh the value that we bring as actuaries and what it could mean as a career choice for many bright students so thanks a lot for doing this and all the best thank you so much sir and with that we'll wrap up this podcast thank you once again